Hello everyone and welcome to episode 54 of the Chess.com Rapid Rating Climb series. In this series I play 15 minute plus 10 second rapid games online and try to explain my thought process while I play so that you guys can try and implement some of the ideas in your own games and get a better understanding of how a stronger player thinks. Assuming you are lower rated than me and if, if not then like I'm kind of confused as to why you're here but you know, do you do you? Um, yeah, let's get into the game. If we win today's game, I mean, we'll be over 2,000 ELO, so that'd be a nice little goal to go for. Let's see if we can get it done. All right, so we have a game against D Twayer or DT Weyer. Weyer is a surname. We have E4, we're going to play C6, and let's see if we can get this done. Now, that flag looks like the United States, but I believe it's Liberia. Yeah, I don't know why it looks like the US flag, but it does. Maybe... Oh, I swear there was something to do with um, ex-slaves getting sent there after the Civil War and it being like liberty or something like that. Anyway, history aside, um, I'm not really much of an American uh, specialist. We have the Karo Khan with knight to d2. Now... We could play a move like knight f6 and try and induce e5. Which I actually think I like the idea of. And then going for more of a French setup with c5 trying to undermine d4. We could take and after knight takes go for the typical Karpov setup with knight d7 and knight f6. Of course after the exchange we could just go knight f6 straight away and double our pawns when we take back. I don't really, apart from taking and going knight f6, I don't really know if there's any other viable moves. Maybe g6, bishop g7. But okay, I'm, I'm going to go knight f6. Of course, if he takes, then um, we will be taking back. But I normally, I normally take. So let's go for something a little bit different here. And there's a good chance we do transpose into a type of French. You could go c5 straight away, but I think I want to play e6 first, so that c5 is defended by my bishop. So let's do this. I'm going to go e6, knight gf3, and let's push c5. We want to bring this knight to c6, and we're just going to put a lot of pressure on. Our queen might come out to b6. I'm surprised this isn't actually a straight up transposition with the French yet. You know on chess.com up in like over here on my screen but you can't see it um it tells you like what opening it is and it's still saying a caro khan but normally when it transposes to a position that occurs from like a different opening say the french defense for different move or in a different move order it normally says so that's kind of surprising oh i feel like bishop d3 is a mistake I know it looks natural, but I feel like it's wrong. Reason being is queen b6. So normally, I believe the idea is to overdefend d4 with a move like knight to b3. But if you put a bishop on d3, then knight b3 no longer becomes playable because c4 forks your minor pieces. Of course, if I take and then take and go queen b6, then knight b3 is fine because my c-pawn has already been traded, so c4 is not possible. But if I go queen b6 immediately, I don't know how you defend this. I have three attackers, so you have two defenders, and knight b3 isn't possible. So if queen b6 is played, on, of course, um, bishop e3 is not playable, I think you have to take. And then I can take with the bishop, or I can take with the knight. This diagonal is going to be very weak for my opponent. Bishop e3, again, isn't playable because of the placement of the knight. So I think this is a big issue for him. And on top of everything else, we have good pressure on the b2 pawn if this bishop ever does get developed. Queen b3, I thought might be worth considering, but I'm not sure. But he takes, and I think this is a major win for us, um, because he doesn't get to put his c-pawn on d4, instead he weakens his diagonal massively, and lose, he loses some of his control over e5, although it's still great. We now have to decide what we're going to take with. Of course we're not going to take with the queen. I think that would be silly. 
the queen's doing a good job where she is and she can always tuck herself back if she needs to so the question becomes knight takes or bishop takes well bishop takes gets our bishop out and ready to castle although white might have some very strong attacking ideas if we do try to castle with a greek gift at some point also if bishop takes maybe my opponent wants to play b4 or a move like knight b3 to kick my bishop away I think I'm more tempted to take with the knight because that comes with a tempo on the bishop and I'm always going to take the bishop if I get the opportunity. Knight b3 I think I'll meet with taking his bishop and after queen takes. Uh, then he can go bishop to e3 though because the queen will be protecting the square. Knight c5, knight b3. We could take the knight. We could take the knight. Although, if bishop c5, knight b3, we could just give a check. And after a move like king f1, we could play bishop to e3. Although bishop here, knight here, bishop here, king e2, makes it difficult for my bishop to escape. It's very interesting lines. I think bishop takes is going to be the best move, actually. Okay, queen e2 is played. Not a move I've really considered, but my main goal was just to make sure knight b3 didn't work. That's what I wanted to check. So he doesn't go for it, so that's great. And now how do we get an advantage? <sighs> no, bishop p3 doesn't look good. I don't want to castle because I think he has Greek gift sacrifices in this position. So let's not allow him to do that. We could just drop the bishop back to e7. We could. And then bring the knight out to c5. If we want. I feel like we have a good position, but it's difficult to try and actually push this. I'm also considering the move a5. Just to stop b4. And to prepare a4 to control the b3 square. Because knight b3, like I said, is an annoying move to have to potentially face. He still can't castle, so that's good. If a5, knight b3, bishop e7, bishop e3. Queen c7, castle, a5. He could just go knight d4 though. We don't have enough time to control the b3 square unless we go a5, knight b3 and a4 and give up the bishop like this. That might actually not be bad. I know it shouldn't be a good idea. But I don't think I mind it. I would love to play a move like knight a5 to defend b3 but then b4 happens. Bishop e3 is worth considering though. Just to kind of, kind of jam the bishop in white's face. And if he moves the knight, trade bishops with him. It is tempting. It really is tempting. And then we can go for this whole plan and bring the bishop back if we get the opportunity. Bishop e3. Mm, knight c4 is my only concern. But we could take bishop e3, takes, 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 and we should be up a piece. I'm going to do it. It looks like a weird move, but my opponent can't castle. This knight can't really move. If this knight moves, I'm going to take his bishop. We still have pressure on b2. I want to stop knight b3 by going a4. Yeah, and here I'm just going to take the bishop. My only concern was his dark squared bishop getting active on the e3 square. But now we trade it off. We still have this uh, attack going. Knight c5 is tempting to go after the bishop. Also get ready to develop my bishop. Because this is a typical French bishop. It's not very good. a5 is still a tempting move though. Because a4 isn't playable as the knight hangs. So... A5 does look good. 
but his knight can always go to d4. But then that's not really that big a deal. That's that's fine. Again, I don't want to castle because I'm sure I'm getting mated after bishop takes h7. So let's not get mated. And besides, our king is pretty safe in the center. Okay. Okay. He goes knight d4. We could take, but then he's going to fix his pawn structure. So I don't want to take. Is he threatening f5? And he's also blocking this diagonal, so he can castle, but that would pin the knight. a4 looks like a decent move. Just stopping this pawn from ever moving, so it's a permanent weakness. And maybe we can try a3 in the future to try and create some holes. Again, does he have threats? Well, he could go knight to b5, trying to get into d6. That's scary. That's scary. And then I would want to castle so that knight d6 doesn't have as big of an effect. I don't actually see how we stop this. I suppose if we take and he takes with the pawn, then that idea goes away. But then his position's still good, though, because his rook's very active. So we could play h6, preparing to castle. I think h6 is always going to be a decent move anyway. My opponent, if this is his idea, then it's a very good idea. His knight will have just hopped like this. Which is kind of hilarious. It's just snaked its way into my position. Like I say, if that's the plan. But my opponent is using his time... Well, <laughs> I was going to say using his time very quickly, but he's not really using his time at all. He now has just as much time as he started the game with. Obviously, you get 10 second increment per move. I'll be interested to see if this is... Yeah, if this is his idea, or if he wants to push f5. f5, I don't love facing that, but if I take it, it does liberate my bishop. So something like takes takes is still scary because e6 exists, don't get me wrong. It is a scary position. Ooh, a4, okay. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I guess you're just supporting this square more and you're not allowing me to push. But b2 is incredibly weak still. Perhaps even more weak now. I feel like f5 should be the idea. I don't want to go g6 though to stop it. You could always go g4 if you really wanted. Hmm. Taking the knight again still exists, but I don't want to do it. Knight c5 is the move I want to play and it's the move I'm going to play. Just to put pressure on this bishop and get my bishop ready for development. Look at these weak squares as well. Like a4 is undefended. Bishop c2 would defend a4. It also make this rook a bit worse. And it would relieve defense of b2, which I might just be able to take. If bishop c2, I can probably just take. If knight b5 ever comes trying to get into d6 or c7, I can't stop the knight from getting in, but I can castle. I can castle to make it less effective so it doesn't come with check. And that's why I played h6 to try and shore up my defences before I did any of that. Okay, bishop to b5 pins my knight, blocks my queen's attack. Bishop d7 looks like the logical move. Breaking the pin. And now I feel very good about the position. My knight could be coming into e4. To put significant pressure on the white position. Um, it would also make it more difficult for white to attack. Because I would be controlling some important squares on the king side. And potentially blocking diagonals. The f3 knight isn't all that impressive. Maybe uh, he wants to do something with this knight like take. And then bring this knight in to replace it. But if he takes here. I'm probably going to take with the pawn. Not the bit. Mm. No, maybe I will take with the bishop. But the reason I mentioned taking with the pawn, 
I still might do it though is to play something like c5 to control the d4 square of a pawn so we can't put a knight there. Because this, I would say, is probably white's best piece. It attacks e6 and f5. Sorry, it doesn't attack e5, it attacks f5. And I, that's what I was worried about. Whoa, b4. Well, if I take, then I open up the c file, which I don't want to do. If I take here, yeah, I think he just fixes his pawn structure at the very least. So I think knight e4 makes more sense. Just get my knight out of the way. There's a lot of complications. But I think as long as I don't take him, I'm probably good. Because if he takes me, all he's doing is weakening his a and c pawns by splitting the pawn structure. Normally not advisable. Because, like, you know, you look at my pawns here, they're all very strong, because they're all together, but... Hmm, he takes with the bishop. Now, if I take with my bishop, then b5 is probably going to come. And... Why well, he has a nice position? He's probably going to play c4, then. If I take with the pawn, then b4 is still an issue. If he takes here, I can take with the rook, try and expose the a4 pawn. Or I can take with the queen to try and expose c3. I have c5 on the way. That looks very nice to me. F5 is absolutely fine, because I now control this square twice. He only controls it once. If he castles, his knight is going to be pinned. B4 is a problem. I think this is very good. Taking towards the center is normally a good thing. And the reason is, because this pawn is now going to help out in control of central squares, important central squares. B5 on the board. Okay. So if we take this, white has plenty of defenders. Plenty. We're not going to be winning anything. If we push c5 to kick this knight, where's the knight going to go? Let's say c2? Looks reasonable. He does have a passed b pawn, which is not lovely. We could leave the tension though. We don't actually have to do anything could play we could just castle or we could play a move like rook a no not rook a c8 just rook c8 to try and get on the c file in the event of an exchange we could castle and then try and play rook f c8 i feel like we always have c5 in our back pocket if c4 comes then maybe c5 takes takes something like knight b3 c4 then we have connected past pawns and this bishop would open up if we play c5 here knight c2 i don't want to allow c4 so i probably have to go c4 myself then the knight can just return, and my position's kind of blockaded. So let's castle. Without my opponent's light squared bishop, I don't think I'm going to be getting mated. I think I'm okay. I don't know if he's going to castle, though. Because, like I say, this pin will exist if he castles. Which is one of the downsides of moving the f-pawn. Of course, it weakens the king's diagonal if he goes kingside. So we'll see if we can take advantage of that or not. Again, f5 doesn't exist, which is great. c4, I think c5 would be the critical response. And we actually had a very similar looking position in a previous episode of the rating climb. Not exactly the same idea, but the point of like after a pawn push to push our pawns as a counter attack. Annoyingly, yeah, d4 won't exist at the end of that because our knight would hang. But, you know, you can't have everything. We could always bring our knight back to c5 to go after a4. Which is worth noting. But, for now, our knight is incredibly strong. Um, I don't see a reason to move it for the time being. By the way, if you've made it this far into the video, and you're not subscribed already, maybe this is your first time on the channel, maybe you've been watching quite a few videos already, then I'd really appreciate if you could drop a like 
like on the video and subscribe if you haven't. It would be very cool of you. Very cool. <laughs> anyway, back to the game. Castles. Can we take advantage of this pin? Well, if we take, he has to play pawn takes, right? We can't take with the bishop because then queen takes, queen takes, knight takes. But we can force this. And then we can go rook c8. And we have pressure on c3. And we have pressure on b5. And our a pawn is passed. That looks pretty good to me. That looks pretty good to me. Because he wants to take with a knight, but he can't take with the knight. So rook c8, rook c4 could be an issue for him. Or ideas like that. Yeah, let's go rook c8. Let's get our pieces putting in the work. This is a very nice looking position. Again, f5 is still not playable. I think that's probably going to be white's source of counterplay. c4. I saw this move. I can't take because my knight will hang, which is why I wanted to put my rook on c4. I guess I'm not quick enough to do that, unfortunately. If he takes, I can just take back. So we're not in any danger. We're not in any danger, but how can we capitalize? This knight, although it's nice, its only escape is c5. Although, something like here, let me go here, trying to play on the pin. We trade rooks. Something like knight c5 takes, knight b3 takes, takes, rook d1. takes I think we should move the knight I think our knight's targets have all disappeared right c3 is now no longer a pawn so I think we should be moving our knight so that this queen isn't putting pressure on the knight so the pawn is no longer overloaded this pin is still a thing if my opponent gets too greedy if he plays king h1 I think we can probably just take on c4. And then try and claim b5 is a problem. And our a pawn could f go down the board. Let's say king h1. Do we have anything else? Oh, okay. So he goes for this line. I was thinking we go knight to b3. That was my plan. I think knight b3 is good. I don't see how it can be bad. If he tries to take on e6 first, then we just take. And he can't take the bishop because this will be a problem for him. Because it will be double check. And he will lose absolutely everything in his position. Including the rook and the queen and the knight. So he has to be careful. I think he has to trade rooks. He's got to trade rooks. Because otherwise he's got too many issues. If he goes for a move like... Mm, he could go rook cd1. He could. It just doesn't look right. Maybe he can do it though. Maybe he can. Maybe I just push. I guess I should take first. Although, you know... It does ruin my pawn structure, which isn't great. But maybe he can just go rook d1. Moves like bishop b5 don't work because a queen takes. And then once my queen takes, the knight will be unpinned and he can take back. Hmm. Maybe an oversight. Maybe an oversight. But at the end of the day, his b pawn isn't really going anywhere. And yeah, he can weaken our pawn structure. Okay. Should I take? 
or should I push? Well, if I push, then he takes. I don't want to do that. So let's take. This is going to be an interesting position. It really is. And there's a good chance I'm worse. Good chance I'm worse. My opponent's navigated this very well. Knight takes I'm not so sure about. I don't know, it looks a bit weird. I was expecting queen takes. Okay, let's take back, restore material equality. Rook c4 is a problem potentially. So yeah, he moves his king so his knight is now no longer pinned. Move like bishop e6, f5 is a big issue. Don't know if pushing is good. Rook c5 might be a good idea. Defending and attacking. C5, knight b3, we should just be able to take. Or maybe even take with the queen. Let's do that. Let's do that. Our back rank should be okay. Okay, yeah. Makes sense. So he's defending this. How can we pose problems? Queen c7 does threaten this. But if he defends with a move like h3, do I want to trade rooks? I don't think so. I don't like the fact my queen's blockading, but that's what it that's what the situation is. Could push a4. Could just push a4. Let's do it. Something tells me that's the right idea. Okay, rook c4 just looks like a good move to me. Because we're attacking a lot of things. And we're also blocking the queen's control of b5. So say knight f3. Say knight f3, what can we do? Hmm push d4. Oh no, then that would hang the rook. Knight f3. We could just take on f4. And then um, f5, e6 isn't an issue. And if he takes here. Bishop e6. Queen c6. Takes. Takes. Sorry, takes, takes. Rook c4. To attack the rook. Pawn, rook b6. Mm, we might go into a sort of knight versus bishop endgame with slightly better pawn structure. But his knight's kind of out of the game. I think that variation works out for me. Obviously he doesn't have to trade queens. But I feel like he sh I feel like that's the most natural thing to do. But rook c4 should stop the problems. Okay, that's an interesting approach. Now we could just go a3 because he can't take it because then we take the knight. We could also consider bishop to b5 winning a pawn. Knight takes, queen takes, queen takes, queen takes, rook takes, rook takes and we end up up a pawn. Okay, that's another option. Critical position. What about a3? Where's his knight going? We could just cash in. But then if he moves his knight, then b5 is going to hang anyway. Let's push a3. I believe in this idea. I do. I think it's good. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. But I feel like we have too many threats in this position. Like, with this A pawn just pushing through, we're going to have. We're either going to deflect one of his pieces, or we're going to force him to start dropping pawns to save the knight. 
very, very intense sort of end game here. I suppose middle end game because we still have queens on. We have a few pieces each, right? <clears throat> but I mean, his knight is kind of being dominated by our bishop here. And it's always kind of a question when you get this sort of structure of knight versus bishop, like in this geometric pattern, as to which piece is actually dominating who. Okay, he goes to knight c6. Hmm. Now, if we take, 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 take. Okay, we're up a pawn. It's probably a draw. Probably a draw. We could take on b5, though. And if he takes, then he's losing a knight. Here, what's he doing with his knight, then? I think we have tricks with rook c1 as well. Say he moves his knight to a square like... Okay, let's say knight e7 check. King f8. And knight here. I think we have tricks in the position. Could take with the queen now. Oh, we could take there as well. I missed that. Totally missed that. Mm, that's a really good move. Mm, that's annoying. No, it doesn't work. Mm. That's not good. Here, here, here. Maybe we have something. Okay, uh, it looks like we're holding on for a draw now. I just missed this idea entirely. Maybe I could have just gone to h8. Stupid. Stupid. Maybe I couldn't have done that. Ugh, I think we have to go for this. I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm really not happy. Fair play to my opponent, though. He's done very well here. And I might just be holding on to a draw, if possible. Really not good, though. I missed queen to a3 somehow. Takes with the knight. Yeah. Down a pawn. We're going to be looking at g2, potentially. Which is, a you know, kind of one of our only sources of counterplay. This should probably be a draw, but <clears throat> down a pawn it's going to take some some technique from myself, so we'll see if I can defend this. And these kinds of endgames are always tricky, because white's just going to be piling on pressure, and knights are just very tricky pieces anyway, of course, so we've got to be fighting against that, which is not ideal, not ideal. Knights are hard to predict, of course. But our bishop is long-ranged, you know, he has scope, so that is potentially useful. And our pawns are together and quite strong, which is a good situation to be in. Although we are down a lot on time, we are down a lot on time. We do have, like I say, this whole g2 thing going on though. Knight is currently blocking our bishop's diagonal, but that could be more of a weakness than a strength for him. We can somehow exploit the positioning of the knight. To be honest, though, I think you can probably just go king to g1, and after I move like bishop to c6, maybe you can just go g3 or g4, and kind of just say that I have no threats. I don't know if that works, but that might be a good way of going about it. Although moves like rook b3 are then a problem, and if he tries to step up. And I can maybe just give checks and then try and force his king out to h4. If 
Okay, free targeting the F4 pawn. And then I'm threatening stuff like this. And then the end game is even looking in my favor. So this is not easy for my opponent just by that one variation. Of course, none of those moves are forced. But it isn't unlikely that something like that could happen. So, okay, let's see what we can muster up in this position. Opponent's taking a bit of a think, which is good because it takes time pressure off of me. It's not awful. This is not awful. Not a good position, but I think rook b2 is probably the most natural move because, like I said, g2 is the target. Opponent's still thinking, which I mean, fair enough. I guess he's probably trying to find a way to actually secure his advantage. But it's not obvious where to put the knight. The knight on d5 is just going to be kind of vulnerable to my bishop on c6, right? Because it requires protection from the rook. And then you're tying down two of your pieces and only one of my pieces is actually doing anything, if you get what I mean. So where does this knight go? It's tough to say. If the knight could get to d6, then sure. But you'd have to go through like c3, e4, and d6. And if you go for a move like knight c3, then I'm going to play bishop to c6. And then how do you defend yourself? Rook g1? That's incredibly passive. I, well, I dominate the knight in this situation. The knight can't move forwards. And I can play a move like rook to f2, maintaining my pressure and picking up the f4 pawn. That looks like a good move. That looks like a good move. Stopping bishop to c6. I think rook d2 makes sense to attack the knight. This would be mate, except my bishop controls that square. And if rook d2, rook c7, I can take the knight. So I'm going to play it. I want to bring my king to e7, probably. He might now go for this idea. He goes here. Hmm. Well, then I can just go bishop c6 because he's blocking his rook off. And then we're going to get a similar position after rook g1. So knight c3 looks no good. Knight b6 attacking my bishop. Probably bishop e6. Probably bishop e6. Rook c8, king e7, rook c7, king d8. And I, I'm i okay. My bishop is again dominating the knight in such a position. And my rook is covering the d-file just in case. This is alright. This is alright. Like I said, it's going to be difficult to defend this. I need to be accurate. I think rook d2 is good. I think it's good. My opponent spent almost four minutes on rook c1. Which I think is a good move, but okay, that's interesting. If I go here now, knight c7. Can I just go bishop f5? Again, I'm, he can't play rook c8, remember? Which would be checkmate. I don't want to go g6 because then he has knight f6. I want to just get the knight out. I want to get the knight out. I don't want to give this check because the king is better on h2 and my rook is no longer targeting g2 for ideas of linking up with the bishop. Who's the knight back here? I'm going to attack the knight. If I can trade my bishop for the knight, it should be a draw. Should be a draw. Especially if I can pick up a pawn in the process. So like knight g4, bishop g4, pawn g4, and rook g3 would get the material level. Here, here, then he would go to d6. Uh, maybe that's his idea. I did consider rook d4. But I rejected it on the basis of f5. Here, if f5, then I take the knight, and then takes takes, 
material balance restored. If anything, I may be a bit better because my king is probably a bit more active than his. <clears throat> so that was my thinking behind that. If knight c4, I do have um rook to c3 actually. And white is probably losing because rook c8 doesn't exist either because our bishop controls that square. So this isn't even playable. Wow, where's his knight going? C2 looks glum. C2 looks very glum. We could play bishop to d5. Targeting g2. Oh, our rook isn't on d2. So why am I even thinking that? If knight c2. We could give it. Mm, I don't know. What are we going to do there? Could go king e7. And just say, yeah, where are you going? You can't get in to either e3 or d4. So like knight c2, king e7. If you want to go this way, that's probably no good. It's an interesting square. Wow. Wow. Let's target the f4 pawn. Try and induce g3. G3 looks weakening. To be honest, Rook D1 doesn't do anything, so let's just bring the king. I want to stop this Rook from infiltrating. Okay, then he just ha he hung uh, H3, so let's take it. If anything, we're probably pushing for a win now. It's still definitely a draw, but. I don't know. The momentum seems to be shifting a little bit. This may be annoying. <clears throat> Give a check, he goes to F3. Go H5. I'm going to do this. <clears throat> I'm going to attack the knight. And then maybe I bring out like, oh, he wants to trade. Okay. Interesting. Really? Here, here, my king can't get in. But I think I just go g6. Mm, I want to put my bishop here though. Yeah, let's put my bishop on e4. And then I can put it all the way back on b1. Something like that. Here I feel like we're doing more. Control this square. It's important. This endgame probably favours the knight because it's very closed and it's on one side of the board. Mm, B2, B, B7 was probably better. So my bishop can't move like this now. But we are getting a bit of time back through the increment. This should be a draw, this position. I might offer my opponent a draw, but I could also just see if he wants to go wrong. Hmm. Do this. Tick take. Then we have a pass pawn. If he uh, ticks takes. Could. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I love giving him a pass e pawn though. I'm just worried about f5. I should have kept my bishop over here. Although, if f5, I might be able to just step back. f6, I should just be able to go back up. Looks a bit un like uncomfortable 
But I am attacking g4, which kind of leaves his knight in an awkward situation. If the knight gives a check on d5, takes, 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 takes. I do have a passed pawn, so that should be a draw at the very, very least. If not, I might be pushing for a win. But it's probably a draw, because his king probably goes to pick the pawn up, and then I probably pick these pawns up. And even if I manage to clean these two pawns up at the cost of one pawn, my king and my h-pawn versus his king will just be a draw because it's a flank pawn and his king will get to h1 in time, plenty of time. <clears throat> if he takes here... Then I suppose I just take back and again try and create a passed pawn on the h file okay he goes for this do i push f6 he takes takes uh, it's a draw either way i think let's push h5 Wait, have I blundered? No. There, 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 there. There, 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 there. No, I should be okay. I think I just gave him more than I needed to, though. Bit silly. I really hope I'm not somehow losing. I'm not going to get tricked here, am I? Does this work? Here, 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 here. Queen, queen. Wait, am I queening first or is he queening first? Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Here, queen, queen. Here then I lose. It's a classic trick. But if I go here, he has king to f6, and I, and I lose. No way. I'm a tempo short. If this was his move, then I'd be winning. Oh no. Yeah, I'm losing. Because if I move my king, then he just goes to f to f6. Oh god! I can't believe that. Terrible, terrible, terrible end game. I had a draw. I had a draw. I'm sure I had a draw. That's so frustrating. Ah, oh, let's get into the analysis. That's. I felt like I had a great opening as well. That's really annoying. That was an incredibly frustrating loss because I just had a clear draw. I just had a draw. I'm sure F6 in the end game was drawing. Anyway, 83.6% accuracy for my opponent, 80.9 for myself. Let's look at the opening. Here in IF6, the computer says is actually a mistake. In this variation, Oh, come on, chess.com, don't do this to me. It's going to do the weird error classifying move stuff. Apparently this is just bad. But he has to find weird moves like knight d to f3. Knight gf3 is far more likely. And this is... I mean, it's plus 0.8, but that's just for French defense. I normally play this variation... I'm going to something like this. No, not like that. Like this. This is how I normally play the position. But I thought I would try and mix it up. And to be fair, we got a very good position. F4. We go E6. Push C5. These are all just typical French slash Caro ideas. We go Queen B6. And yeah, there are some problems for White. 
Just take. I was I wasn't convinced of knight takes. After bishop c2, I wasn't sure what my plan should be. Apparently a5 is the only good move. And if knight d4, then I should play moves like bishop d7. This just seemed a bit weird to me. I don't know. I decided to take with the bishop. And on, on knight b3, um, bishop f2, if king to e, if king f1 then bishop to e3 looks good to me, or not, a5 is the only good move, this is complicated, wow, but more natural is king e2 to stop this, and then I should play h6 or a5? I guess if I get kicked out, I just come back to c5 anyway. And if he takes, then he takes. That's not the end of the world. But okay. He goes queen e2, which was a good move. I go bishop e3, which is the best move. Apparently. Knight b3, we trade bishops. a5. Knight bd4. h6. Um, so the reason I go h6 is because castles here, I think I just lose. Yeah, Greek gift sacrifice. I'm just getting checkmated, and there's nothing I can do. Best case scenario, I come out to g6, queen g4, f5, takes... Well, it takes, I'm good. But he can just go to h4, and I don't have rook h8. And then I have to sack here. And I'm still just in dire straits anyway. So... I didn't go for this. I go h6 first so that I can castle. a4. The computer doesn't love. And I kind of agree. But it is playable. Knight c5. Attack the bishop. And yeah, bishop b5 seemed weird. Bishop c2 seemed way more normal. But it does allow queen b2. Computer says white's okay. Apparently. But this is a tough position to play. You are just down a pawn. And it's not obvious where your compensation is. So bishop b5, bishop d7. And this was just a strange move. But I didn't handle it well. I should have taken. Really? Wait, what? Takes, takes. Oh, I can just take on a4. I can just go up a pawn. Take, take. Castle. And then b4 hangs. Wow, not going to lie, I just missed that a4 was hanging at the end of that. That's bad. That's really bad. How long did I spend on this move? Like, 20 seconds. Stupid use of time. Stupid use of time. But this position's still good. b5. Castles is good. Castle. We take, which is good. a takes. Rook fc8, c4. Okay, this is inaccurate. Knight c5. Rook c5 is a good move. A4 is a good move. Just continuing to push. Because, I mean, let's say a4 and white takes. Apparently knight c3 is an idea, but we could just take back. And I mean, this is still an issue. B5 is still an issue. Our knight is still great. This is still potentially causing problems. If this knight, if this king goes to h1, and let's just say for the sake of argument, we have something like, I know I could take on this square, but let's just say for the sake of argument, um, no, let's not have that. <laughs> I'm just trying to manufacture something weird here. Basically, I wanted to say that knight f2 check existed in some positions, and you would either have to give up the exchange or get checkmated with the typical smothered mate. Oh no, you can actually take with a knight. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> but you can take the queen anyway. But those ideas exist, is what I mean. Knight c5 isn't good, though, although we're still in a good position. Again, knight b3, I shouldn't play that. I should just take. Let's say king h1. I could go back to e4, but I can also just go to e6. Let's say he trades. 
F takes. We have good control over F5. And B5 is just going to fall. Yeah, I didn't play this well. Knight C5, Knight B3 was just not good. After the trade, we are still better though. Takes, takes. Oh my god, I can take on B5. I bet so many of you were screaming that as well in this position. How long did I spend on this move? Like f 10 seconds. No, that's so stupid. This is obviously the move. Queen takes here, here, queen d5. This is so much better for black. Because we have the outside passed pawn. Something like this. He can't even take because of back rank mate. But let's say a5. Uh, king g1, rook c4. We have two passed pawns. Our king's about to get involved. And yeah, we're completely winning. Several times in this game, I had completely winning ideas, and I just didn't see them. Yeah, I took. But I'm still better. Okay, rook c4 straight away is what I should have played. And if knight f... If knight f5 can't be a move. Let's say knight f3. Yeah, I just take. And if rook d1... Bishop g4, rook d2, then you're getting in big trouble. Ah, <sighs> god. Yeah, I should have seen it. Bishop c5, rook b1, but I, I still find decent moves. Rook c4, rook d1, and yeah, I'm pushing now with a3. But a3 is not good. Bishop b5 is better. Queen c5 is also good. Let's say I do go for this. Knight b5. Queen b5. Queen here. Queen takes. Rook takes. Rook takes. I'm just up a pawn. And the e-pawn is weak. And I have a passed outside pawn. Why did I not do this? I don't know. I really don't know. A3. I think I just missed all of this stuff. And here I blundered the game away. By taking here. I should have either played queen c5. Or just take. Take, take, take. Take, take, take. I'm completely winning. I'm completely winning. Oh my god. How did I miss that? Oh, that was obvious. Yeah, what a move from my opponent. Here. If I, if, if I do go to h8, then this, this. Maybe this gives me more chances. But yeah, my king looks very, very scared in this position. Here, here. I, I, I just missed that a3 was hanging for some reason. Here I didn't see anything better than exchanging. And I play the end game really, really well. Rook b2 is the best move. Here, rook d2 is the best move. Bishop b6 is good. Here, okay, I, not the best, but we forced the knight back. Rook d4, yeah, we forced this forward. I really should have just taken on h3 the first time of asking. I don't know why I missed that. But both of us did, so it was okay. And here I'm fine. Like, we're fine. I should just hold this endgame. King e6. I should have put the bishop on a square like b1, I feel like. But I'm still fine. F5, move the king back. Here, takes, takes. Takes, takes. I'm still drawing. But I need to play h4. If the king comes back. Then it's the same position we got in the game. But it's white's turn to move. And if he moves the king back. F6, king g3. We win the pawn. But white can hold this. Ah, because white has the opposition. So white holds. But yeah, as it happened, I just didn't go h4. 
But this. Oh my god, it's still a draw. It's still a draw. What am I doing? This is still a draw. Oh my god. Okay, so obviously I can't go f6, right? Because king g6, my king has to move away, and you win the pawn. But I can just play king d4. Sorry, king e4, or king d4, or king d5. Because after king f6, I just come here. And you can't take because I take. And if the king just hangs around, then I'm fine. Oh my god. I actually can't believe that. I'm actually so ashamed of that. That's so bad. Please feel free to make fun of me in the comments. That was an awful, awful game. So bad. I had such. I had several winning end games that I could have gone into, and even at the end, it was completely drawn, and I just thought I was lost. Oh, God, chess is cruel. So cruel sometimes. So cruel.